this again. Procrastination. Yeah, that's a way of being stuck. We're just putting things off. And putting things off and putting things off. I'll get to it. Yeah, yeah, I meant to do that. I'll do it tomorrow. And tomorrow never comes. Well, tomorrow does come. It's just that what you are going to do doesn't go with it. We can all be guilty of procrastination in many different ways. Some of us are actually very motivated to go forward and some of us are very motivated or demotivated to procrastinate. But for what reason? What does it do for you? Again, the question is, how is it serving you? Freud said there were no accidents. As you know, I'm not really keen on Freud most of the time, but I think he was kind of right in saying that. There would be a reason, uh, something behind, a purpose behind what you're doing or choosing not to do. To-do lists was something that we spoke about last week or the week before. And how a to-do list is a never get done list because you're always adding to it. So every time you strike something off the list or put a tick on that box, you're thinking, what else can I do now? What else can I do now? What else can I do now? And that's a way of procrastinating because we're not prioritizing things. And one of the ways of being in a state of stuckness is not knowing what your priorities are. Paying no attention whatsoever to what it is that your needs are that are not being met right now. And yes, I'm talking selfishly here. What are your needs? What needs are not being met by you for you? Or for you by you? Are you a giver and a doer? Are you always doing and giving to other people before you even think about yourself? And then it means that nothing gets done for you. I mean, I know that there's many, many people who do certain jobs like a plumber or a cleaner. And on occasions, the last thing that they will do is work in their own space. Not everyone is like that. Some people are very motivated to to do their work and will start tinkering in their own bathrooms and it will be a never-ending situation where the plumbing will always need plumbing and the cleaning will always need cleaning and will be getting done. Then there will be other ones where someone else's needs are beyond that of your needs and as long as the toilet flushes, who gives a damn about whether or not you need a new shower? or the tap needs a new washer. These are things that we have to think about because also spiritually and emotionally and psychologically, we're not looking after ourselves. Now, shamanically, I would say, journey to the spirit of procrastination and find out what its gift is, its wisdom, the way that it's going to work for you or is actually working against you because that could be your obstacle. That could be your big building block of, if I can get through this, when I can get through this, and understand that I there is a getting through it, over it, round it, under it situation. What will life be like on the other side? Maybe that's what's stopping us. Maybe it's the idea of getting out of that bath of custard and looking on the other side of that procrastination and it's nicer to be stuck. Not nicer in a kind of comfortable, nice, beautiful way, but it's easier because then I don't have to make a decision. I don't have to be responsible for someone else's joy or sadness or their ability to do something. Maybe I just want to stay here because, you know, it's better to sit and watch Netflix on binge mode than to actually get up and look at what's going on in my life other than what I can't do, think about what I can do. Maybe the spirit of procrastination is there because you invited it in. Now, I'm great at procrastinating. I can tell you that basically 
it wasn't for the fact that I quite enjoyed doing this to a certain extent, I'd probably put it off as it would never get done. I would be distracted. There would be something else going on. And it does happen to a certain extent because as you can see, it is now 28 minutes past four and we are just doing the live. That's mainly because there were other things that had to be scheduled today. Clients, workshops, had to be scheduled beyond this. Always knowing that after I had done what I had to do today, this was going to be my time with you. And I think it's very important really also to understand that although my timings are not always on schedule, I will still turn up, usually. And if I don't, there's a good idea and a good reason behind it. I may be taking time for myself or I may be really, really busy. Now on occasions it might mean that I'm really, really busy because I have procrastinated to the extent that I need to have one day where I do nothing but what I was supposed to do when I was supposed to do it. I am sometimes a bit of a deadline girl. I get a deadline and I will wait and wait and wait and wait and wait until that deadline is due. And then I might even wait until it's right on there, on the spot, on the button, before I will actually start to do something. My husband sometime, one time said to me, you're really good at doing things off the cuff. You can wing it so easily. Now that is a procrastinator's dream. Why would I bother to work at anything? Why would I bother to prepare? If, I, if I'm so good at winging it, if I am the master of wingingness, why would I prepare anything? Surely that would just stifle me. Now see, there's where we come into explaining away and excusing our procrastination. And I do do prep. Possibly not as much as some people would think, but I do prep. I do actually think about what it is I'm going to do. When I'm being other directed spiritually, shamanically, the preparation is putting the intention out there to say, this is what I want to do. What do you think? Is this going to be something that is going to be resonating with people? Is it going to be something that's going to be happening? And actually, I don't know if you've noticed, but these lives have had a little bit of a theme going on. Each week there's been a bit of a theme. And one theme has followed on from the other. That was not prepped. However, my belief system and the way that my universal mind works is that when I put that focus of intention out into that universe and say, hey, grab hold of this and I'll run with it with you. We were talking about multitasking. Now that's got a lot to do with to-do lists as well. And it's interesting because my thought was, when someone said, oh, I can't multitask, I don't know. Do you drive? Do you cook? Then you multitask. You had to learn how to do it. You had to learn about timings, about what to start first, about what to do next. However, one day, boom, just like that, it became a natural thing for you to do because you outsourced it or insourced it to a space within yourself. When you're driving and cooking, your hands are doing things that your brain is not even aware of because everything's in the back room. You could be thinking, singing along to some music, even watching some television on occasions because some people do have televisions in their kitchens. Other people have iPads and things like that with videos on how to cook. Now that's multitasking. When you're looking at that and doing it there, that's multitasking. So we can do it when we have focus. And sometimes the focus is even put into the automatic bin, as in, we can do that, you can go on and think about something else now because we're absolutely on top of this. The memory is in the muscle. So we can also end up with procrastination 
as a memory in the muscle and get kind of content and laissez-faire about what we're going to do and how we're going to do it but suddenly that becomes a habit and then we forget what it's like to be motivated and to move and to actually get things done we forget now I am very very aware of the amount of things that I've forgotten since I stopped my work as a veterinary nurse and things have moved on so much since then that it's a whole new world out there some of it not entirely happy with but then it's none of my business anymore but at the same time all of that that I could do without even really thinking about it it was a natural action response to a situation to the stimuli that was coming in the animal would come in there would be a history taken there would be an idea of what to do then there would be an action and an action plan made and completed and only when that animal came back for its stitches to be out was that situation finished and even then I mean they're still clients when it comes down to actually dealing with stuff when you're curtailed in so many other ways from either going out to your normal way of working or not we can actually start to look at the ostrich head in the sand situation and look at the idea that we might have had some of us of saying I'll just wait till this is all over and then well is this ever going to be all over because things have changed and we're going to be starting off on the back foot so what will happen then are we going to procrastinate about starting again and then never get anywhere psychologically emotionally and spiritually we are beings that have physical selves and intangible selves although the intangible selves really have a tangible effect on the rest of it and it doesn't really procrastinate it tells us when things are going wrong when things are getting a little bit into the needle pointing to the red of overwhelm stress hello where are you going boom all done it's what we listen to it's how we actually monitor the automatic processes which is something that we have to do otherwise they'll just go and do what they want to do then suddenly one day we wake up and discover that we've forgotten how to actually drive a car or understand how to multitask in a, an area that we used to be so comfortable doing that things that we can do spiritually we can meditate we can look at what's going on we can journey we can ask our poor animals what's going on how to deal with things and perhaps you may not have been connecting as much as you could have done throughout the situation maybe it would be a good idea to start again now we are going to be doing some workshops we're going to be doing some intro stuff it will be on eventbrite and it will be on the pages and even if you're not shamanically inclined why not have a go because it will be something that will really tickle and give you pause for thought maybe it will be something that you'll really enjoy maybe it'll be something that you'll say oh well I tried that it was okay but not my kind of thing I don't want to go any further with it that's fine you will at least then have broadened your horizon slightly you'll have opened a door to say what's in there I was curious I discovered it not for me today thank you why not try it anyway because you never know what's going to allow your thought to flow into a space of motivation into a space of understanding the new paradigms that are coming in into a space of being less stressed in life into being calm and assured in what you're doing and that your decisions and choices will have impact but 
the impact is something that you are totally aware of and able to monitor. Bring yourself to the party again. Stop binging on television programmes or on news that's going to just get your limbic system on overdrive. Danger, danger, warning, warning. Yeah, if we did that, we would never move from the city. And actually, once we get there, our world gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Physically and mentally and spiritually. So let's make the to-do list a have-done list. Let's take it off the list list and say, right, done that, next, and schedule it and understand that, yeah, I can do this much in a day, but is doing that much actually good for me? What am I losing if I do that much every day, the same time, every day, the same amount, or just keep adding to it and squishing as much as I can in between my waking hours? Are you feeding your soul? Are you feeding your senses? Are you allowing your mind to expand and think and flow? Are you thinking that might be a good idea? I wonder and I think that having Thursday thoughts can be everyday thoughts and that wondering can be everyday too and if wondering leads to wandering down a little path that you've never wondered before I wonder if that might be good what kind of thoughts you might think there and what you might see and hear and feel and do for yourself that will actually help other people too see you tomorrow